So this is who Jeremy from the quartering really is. This is his true colors. This is who he actually is as a person. And this is why I jumped off the quartering train years ago. Let's get into it. Skip it a button, that up. So I have had, how can I put this lightly, differences with the quartering for a very long time. Actually, fun fact, back during the Diablo Immortal fiasco, um, that's when I found out who the quartering was. That's when he found out who I was. He actually had me featured in one of his 2018 recap videos. Um, it was on New Year's Eve that I was in that video a few years ago. Time flies and things change. But it was shortly after that that I realized what the quartering was really about. He wasn't a a, a warrior for being anti-SJW. He wasn't an a, uh, anti-cancel culture warrior. He was just a grifter who would weaponize the same exact things he was calling out against time and time again. Um, and that's why I jumped off the train. I know you want to think it's because I care about your numbers, Jeremy, or I care about your sub growth or whatever. The ca- I don't care about any of that. I care about the fact that I saw what you were doing. And to put it lightly, I wasn't a fan. And yeah, I called you out on it. But the thing about me is that I keep it on YouTube and don't go into someone's personal life. Well, last night during my stream, which I do streams now on my secondary YouTube channel called RTU Streams, link below in the description, someone said that the quartering brought me up in a video. And they, they there was people that were mad about it and they showed me the video and he put me in the same category of lol cows like Chris Chan, really. DSP gaming and Wings of Redemption, which all right, whatever. If you want to do that, that's that that's your take and you can. But I just find it funny that even when I ha- don't mention him for quite a while, I seem to come out of his mouth and I gave I gave my take on his YouTube channel again. I think it's a grifting channel. I think his takes aren't genuine. I never go below like things that he posts on Twitter or things that he posts on YouTube. I I keep it to the internet and keep it on the internet and don't go beyond that. Jeremy uh, didn't reciprocate that and dug up stuff into my personal life or was handed stuff from my personal life that he had no issue showing on the internet. Anyway, he deleted most of this or his social media manager, she deleted most of this. Um, which I hear is kind of a habit where, you know, he drinks a little too much of the sauce. This is allegedly, he says a bunch of stupid crap. And then the next day someone has to come in and clean up his mess. That's a fantastic way to run a business. 10 out of 10. So this is what it started with on Twitter. And I wasn't necessarily just referring to him. There's countless other people that are on YouTube that fit into this. And I was thinking of them as well. And I wrote this last night. The amount of fragile egos in the content creation community is staggering. We make videos and live stream. We aren't winning Oscars or curing cancer. Stop blanking off to yourselves. We aren't celebrities. Also, too, there are plenty of witnesses to this. It isn't me. You could very easily manipulate a tweet and make people say what you want them to seem like they're saying to to discredit them. These are all really from the quartering. There, there's no other way around it. I would not do that. I would not just slander somebody for the sake of slandering them. Well, I guess even though the quartering doesn't follow me on Twitter, um, this is not the first time something like this has happened. Uh, He does follow me on Twitter. Maybe he doesn't click the follow button, but he follows what I say. And he quote tweeted this uh, to me. I just read over your dating profile. It was amazing. You're going into a dating profile that I already had deleted before any of this happened, by the way. (laughs) He thinks I was lying about that. I deleted the profile before any of this went down. So uh, that so I wrote and this was true. That's funny. I don't have one because I deleted it. You are such an unbearable human being. And we continue because I did. I deleted it before any of this went down. I changed my mind, got off the site. And to be quite frank with you, what does it matter that I have a dating profile? What's so damning about it? What, what, what was, what was in there that was so horrifying? And he continues on to actually post my dating profile because that's something that, you know, a anti-social justice warrior person should do. So then he goes on to say liar, which 
is not true. I wasn't lying. I did. I deleted it before any of this happened. I just said, ah, I'm good with the site. I'm not interested in it anymore. It's gone. Go try to look for me there. If there is someone there, it's not actually me. I guarantee you, if there's someone there using my pro- those pictures or someone there who says they are me, it is not me. And I hope to God that isn't happening because Lord knows what they're trying to do pretending to be me. And I wrote back, that was deleted. Go look to see if I'm on the app. Also, yes, that was my dating profile. Is there a problem with that? And that's true. Like, what is so damning that's there? So I write back to him, so apparently the lifeless piece of garbage known as the quartering has an interest in my personal life. Then you wonder why people think you're a piece of blank, Jeremy, because you are a piece of blank. And he writes back to me, Rich, I really wish you the best. I am very interested in all the women you lie to in your sad online dating profiles. Yes. Take care of the kids you have, you creep. And that's when I kind of you don't bring up my kids you don't know anything about my kids you don't know anything about my family just like I don't know anything about yours and I wouldn't go into any of that but you seem to think because of my political viewpoints that you have a right to do this but this is the real you this the unbiased pretending to be unbiased quartering that you see on YouTube that's all a facade man this you want to destroy people you think are political opponents. You want to you want to destroy people that dislike your viewpoints. You don't just want to disagree with them. You consider anyone who doesn't side with you your enemy. And it's disgusting. And I wrote back to him, "Hey Jeremy, you know nothing about my life. Mind your blank business, you waste of air." And then Captain Anti Cancel Culture, who claims himself to be a champion of being anti cancel culture on his YouTube channel, tries to cancel me for something that happened well over a decade ago that I apologized for almost a decade ago. And it was a comment I made about Barack Obama back in 2009 or 2010 where I referred to his half-black butt. We'll say butt to keep this YouTube friendly. Um, It wasn't meant to be a racist comment. It was a poor choice of words, and I have apologized for it countless times since. But what's funny is is that the guy who's like, why would you dig back through, who makes videos almost on a daily basis claiming to be against this, weaponizes it when it's against someone that he doesn't like. You can't just selectively be against something, man. You got to be against it. That's a perfect example of someone trying to be pursuing cancel culture or pushing cancel culture. Something that I said well over a decade before that I've already brought up, already addressed, and already apologized for. But you don't care. You don't have a moral fiber. You don't have a moral compass. You're just doing whatever you want to do and whatever you need to do to appease your audience. And because they enjoy this stuff, they know you're a hypocrite because they're hypocrites too, some of them. Not all of them, some of them. And the ones that aren't, Hopefully, we'll see this and see who you really are. They love when you do. Yeah, we're against cancel culture when we don't want the person to be canceled. But if we dislike them, we're not really against cancel culture. We're just against it when we just don't like somebody because we're hypocrites and we're pieces of garbage. That's what you are, Jeremy. And then I wrote, imagine making a living pretending to be anti-cancel culture, then immediately turn around and attempt to get someone canceled you don't like. That, my friends, is a hypocrite. Good night. But it doesn't end there. I then DM'd him to one-on-one about the situation because I thought him personally attacking me was ridiculous. So this is what I said. And there's no other context to it. The last time I messaged him, I believe, was when we had that fallout where he made a video saying I was harassing uh, one of his workers, because I was all I did was question if he actually had a social media manager. Apparently, I hear this is a thing, and he does. And what happens is, is he goes, he drinks a little bit too much of the sauce, or he just drinks. Let's just put that. He gets drunk, and then he posts. This is alleged. This is what I hear. Kind of seems like it's par for the course, though. He posts a bunch of stupid crap, says a bunch of stuff he doesn't say, and then so like she has to come in and delete and, and try to sweep everything under the rug. That's a excellent way to run a business. But this is what I wrote to him via DM. Uh, are you seriously going into my personal life? Are you insane or stupid? And he writes back, LOL, ha, ha, ha. Dude, you're a loser. You have an enormous viewership, and you do nothing but lie. It's so sad. 
what? And that, that's rich coming from you, by the way. No pun intended. Uh, and I wrote to him, that's a level I would never stoop to. That's gross, man. Unreal. Uh, the sad details of your day-to-day is something I have avoided posting about and will continue to not post about. Well, dude, what do you know about my day-to-day? What do you know about it? The only thing you may know about it is like malicious misinformation that people who don't like me put out there. So unless you have like bugs or cameras around my house, you don't know anything about my existence, dude. You know detractor videos. You you have those videos too. You know you think you you trust those sources? Should I trust the sources who have negative crap about you? Actually, I verified what some of the people have sent to me. But really? Really? You don't know a thing about me, man. Stay out of my personal life. Don't talk about my kids. You know nothing. You know nothing. And because I have different political viewpoints than you does not mean you have the right to attack me, which you at minimum insinuate here. Let's continue. So I wrote to him, my day-to-day, what are you talking about? And he wrote back to me right here, Rick, tune into Voshmore. It's going to be a huge win for you. He has some... Ever since I said that I like Vosh and I watch him from time to time, and yes, I do, and I won't apologize for that, he's been really hurt. Like It's like he, he's making it like I've cheated on him. He's, not, he's mentioned this a few times in the past before, too. It's really weird. Uh, it's going to be a huge win for you. Communism is the way. And I said to him, dude, keep it to YouTube. I would never post anything about your personal life. This is just gross and unethical. And then he writes, LOL, I don't have anything to post. Go blank, Vosh is blank. Communism is the way, Ricardo, which the last time someone called me Ricardo was my ninth grade Spanish teacher. I, I don't understand why he calls me Ricardo. It's very strange. And this was the last one uh, he posted via DM before I blocked him. Because again, you go into my personal life, you're going to get blocked. Sorry, if you think I'm a coward for that, you need to rethink what a coward is. I can't wait for the day your anti-American commie ass gets back in the breadline. You're an enemy of freedom. This is who the quartering is. The guy who is anti-political correctness, anti-social justice warriors, literally acts as bad as them when, when he doesn't like what someone has to say, when he doesn't like someone criticizing him. He is scum. Look, you may like that. You may look, I like that he's hypocritical. I, I like that there's double standards. I only want him to go after the people that I feel should be going, going after. I want him to try to, he literally, a guy who makes a living off of being anti-cancel culture. And he's done this to other people before too. He's done this to other people before. I thought you were against anti-cancel culture. I thought you were just about criticizing people, and not digging into their history to look for something to bring up about them. I thought that that was your take, Jeremy. Oh, but when you don't like somebody, it's okay. The gloves could come off and you could go below the belt, right? This is, for everyone out there now, like, look at this. This is your hero. This is what he does. He doesn't stand for anything. He's just taking advantage of his audience. He doesn't have a moral compass. He doesn't have a a spine. He'll do whatever he needs to do to try to destroy anyone who's around him who may make him look bad. You're going to do this. Jeremy, your audience knows you. They were coming to me like, yeah, Rich, this is a thing. Uh, We're pretty sure that he drinks, writes a whole bunch of stuff. And then, yeah, someone who works with him has to clean up his mess every morning. If that's the case, man, I don't. I'm not saying this from a a cold-hearted standpoint. I mean this. You need to get help. But you being drunk does not dismiss your actions. It does not dismiss the things you did. Because I've been drunk before, and the first thing I didn't go is, hmm, let me go uh, and, and put out the quartering's personal life and his personal information and talk about his family. This is the real Jeremy. This is the real the quartering. He's not this hero that everyone tries to make him out to be. And if you don't see it after this, I don't know what the hell else to tell you. This is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. 